In 1919, he hit 29 home runs and was sold to the New York Yankees. A three-run home run for Bucky Dent. The Yankees now lead it by a score of 3-2. to Bill Lee is now going over to a couple of the Yankees, and there they go again. Tech and A-Rod going at it. Roberts is going. Masada's throw. Roberts safe. And what can I say? Just dip my heart and, and call the Yankees my daddy. Welcome to Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports. It's the I don't give a crap edition. No, that's just me. John Senecal and sitting in Matt Saroy's <laughs> usually producing, but he's sitting in today. I'm just, listen, I want to talk about the other races, but I have to tell you, I'm probably where I thought we would be. But the way we got here sucks so bad. And the only thing I'm actually kind of looking for now I can't even say it's a race for the bottom. I think that the the, the the last place has been decided. I think that the Red Sox can't catch the Yankees. Now I'm interested in Bobby Dahlbeck. <laughs> I'm like, can they Bobby make Bobby Dahlbeck still in the Red Sox? No, him? no, he got called up and he's 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 been on fire because Casas is done for the yeah, season. Yep. And like maybe he becomes tradable. I don't or I don't know. I mean, I think they've chosen Casas over Dahlbeck, but I always thought he had potential, and he tore it up in AAA, and we're like, maybe he's just a 4A player. He's but the bottom line is, if that's what I'm holding on to, oh, it's no. pathetic. <laughs> so my point is, so like, you guys just you tell me where you want to go, because I'm done. You, pathetic like Mike Stanton pathetic? Whatever. I mean, Giancarlo Stanton. Sorry, why do I go out? Big Mike. Mike Stanton. I liked him because no, no batting gloves, right? Didn't he have no batting gloves? I think there's not many no batting gloves left. Even Kyle Tucker. No, I think Mike Stanton, with the guy who was a hitter, the Stanton guy, who, didn't he play for the Sox too? Formerly known as Mike Stanton, you mean Giancarlo? <laughs> no, wasn't there a Stanton who was a position player for the Yankees and the Red Sox? There was a Mike Stanton that pitched. Was a pitcher, there's yeah. another Stanton. Giancarlo. Who am I thinking about? Who had no batting gloves? It was awesome. It's old school. Old school Stanton. In like in like the last twenty years. Anyway, I'm ruining the show already. You're Can not, you guys just take not, it? You're not, you're not ruining the show. You're not being that negative. I mean, it is it is what it is. I mean, the, the season is a mess for both teams. I mean, the Yankees, it comes down to like every injury you could possibly get. But at least the Yankees will be able to hang uh, an award on the on the mantle because Cole will probably get the Cy Young. And you AL. think so? You think yeah, he'll get it? I think you so. on our morning show on WTIC, Matt brought it up for like the very first time. What's that? About him getting the side. Oh, are you going to just sit here? Yeah. You're not going to talk? I'm looking for the no batting gloves, Mike Stanton, that you're talking about. Me, Stanley. 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 Oh, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, He played for the Yankees and the Red Sox. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, Mike Stanley. He's no, no Spike Stanley. Owen, though. <laughs> I love wow. Spike Owen. Spike Owen was nice. Spike I love, Owen was good. Yeah, you know, I also loved Orlando Cabrera. Loved yeah, him. Yeah, what happened to him? He bounced around a ton. He was and... another guy that came from the Expos, right? He was good. He was a guy like Spike Owen. But Spike yeah. Owen went. From the Red Sox, the Expos, right? Or was it Expos to the no, Red Sox? No, I know he. The Expos were gone by the time he was on the Red Sox. I think. Yeah, Pedro came from the Expos. I mean, no. Duquette came from the Expos. Randy, so, Johnson. Randy Johnson. Yeah, we never got Randy. Larry Johnson. Walker. I saw. I went no, to from, Montreal. We no, no, we're talking in general. Oh, they were great. The '94 team would have won, might have won the World Series. Yeah, remember? I was. I was in Montreal probably in '90 or '91, and uh, Galarraga, Wallach, mm. uh, Walker. Uh, Owen, Tim Rock Reigns on that team. Um, Tim, he was, he was gone on the by White then. Sox by then, yeah, maybe. Been, yeah. Um, and there was, I think Randy Johnson. I don't, maybe I can't remember, but I it mean, developed the, some serious yeah, talent. The team yeah. was nuts, and it was like in the in the place was Hopman, like really? Hopman. Oh my God, yeah! It was the first time I had ever saw. A, a, like an actual, and I, you know, I love the wave, Brian. I'm a big fan of the wave, right? Yeah, <laughs> that and can't sweet, wait for that it to come back Caroline. around so I can fake my stand up. He's the first one up yelling, "Let's go, guys!" <laughs> the good thing is, I have long, I have long arms, and I'm relatively tall, so I can no. just do this. First of all, I, I don't stand, up. I don't stand up anyway. Yeah, yeah so. I don't either. So I, I'll just raise my arms. So, anyways, getting back to the wave and uh, Olympic Stadium in Montreal, which is kind of cool when you look at it, and the fact that they actually thought they were gonna uh, pull that roof off with cables and it was gonna work. And like, yeah, it's like, all right, we did it once. <laughs> We're going to close this thing for the next 30 years. Anyways, so it was the first time I saw the wave doing a full, full loop, but opposite directions. Like two at once? Two. Wow. It crossed? Top, top and bottom layers yeah. of the stadium. See, Americans can't, Americans can't do that. No, they, can't pull no, no, they couldn't no. pull it off. But it was amazing. You actually had, for one, you had fans in the st stadium, right. right? And then they pulled that off. Now, fast forward to my bachelor party which was in 2000, 
and I saw Jose Lima, rest in peace, pitch against them. Uh, for, he was pitching for the Astros. We went up there for my bachelor party, and we walked in, and I think uh, maybe we took paid. a break from the strip clubs to go to a baseball. No, no, game. we went. Well, it was our first stop. Was the baseball <laughs> game, and and I remember <laughs> we walked. I think I think we paid like four bucks or something as we walked in. Like they're basically Canadian gave, or U.S. I don't even remember. Yeah, was, <laughs> they were literally giving them away, right? Yeah. And so we walked in. We sat. We walked right up. Sat like five rows above the the <laughs> first base dugout, and the and the and the waitress, or I guess like usher came over and my friend pulled the old uh, Rodney Dangerfield and he said, was it Rodney Dangerfield? Yeah, and back to school. He said, uh, bring beers every inning until somebody, <laughs> we did that line, until somebody <laughs> passes out and then bring beers every two innings. And that was actually the, wolf, the Wolf of Wall Street. What about, like, wasn't that <laughs> martinis? That's yeah, how they that's talked how, about that's martinis. That's how we started my bachelor party. That, you know, fast forward from 97, well, 90 to 2000 in 10 years the decline of baseball in Montreal. Oh, I wish they'd go back. I really do. Hey, uh, it's Matt Soroy, John Senecal, Brian Shackman here, fan base, a deep diver in the greatest rivalry in sports. Let's quickly take through any thoughts on the other races. Obviously, there's only two races that matter right now in terms of outside the wild card, the AL East between Baltimore and Tampa and the NL West between Houston, Texas, and Seattle. Any thoughts? I- I'm more interested in the AL West. AL West, I, I mean, yeah. Seattle's schedule the last week is against – they got like seven against Texas and then three against Houston. Seattle so they're, they're like has any. the hardest game. Are we yeah, all in yeah. agreement though? We want Seattle and Texas and Houston to oh, not I mean, make it. Yeah, it's, it's everybody you, listening. Yeah, it has to be unless you're outside of the Houston area. Uh, I mean, nobody, nobody <laughs> unless you're one of the three hundred thousand fans yeah. worldwide of the Houston Astros. You think that's possible though? You think is it, this a scenario that Houston doesn't make it because they're they're ahead of. They're Did ahead he, of the Blue Jays, right? Yeah. So they're in the playoffs either way, right? Well, well they, they, they lead the West right now by half a game. Right, right but is there a way that they don't win the West and then miss the playoffs entirely? They, well, yeah, they could just keep losing and not yeah. get the No, but I mean, right? like, if, I mean, if they, that clo- if they, if they were to fall out of first, because they're only a half game up as of Friday, my point is, is that if they fall oh, yeah, out of first. because nobody's close enough in that race to get the third well, I'm, spot. I'm wondering that. That's all yeah. I'm, I'm well, curious about. Well, I mean, the about. Yankees would have to really step up. Right. And, like, so they're going to make the something. playoffs either – Either way, it's just right? a matter of where they're going to probably see right. in the playoffs. Right. I mean, but also, I mean, they they got Casey, Seattle, and then uh, Arizona going out, so they they don't have a, a, a very easy schedule because actually Kansas City's playing very good baseball mm. right now. Um, but at the same Only time, John would know that. Did you know same, that? I mean, I know they have 102 losses, but I, I know they have come on as a play. They've called up a lot of kids. Well, too, if you so look they're... at it too, like there's like, there's across from across baseball right now, there's a lot of teams that are that are that are going to really have to struggle, including the Atlanta Braves to get 100 wins. I think they're at like 94 right now. As of Friday, they're... yeah, and there's no, like no. what nine, eight to nine. They're games. 98. They're yeah, 98. The Braves are 98. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was like uh, the, the next closest team was something 94. I, I saw the Orioles. I think are like a... Orioles, Orioles is what like it was. 94, yeah, yeah, to see if they could get to 100. Um, but yeah, that's not going to be an easy feat because they got a tough schedule too. So real quick, I, I, I don't know anybody who's said anything about the Minnesota twins because they, it, half the season, the NL AL central leader was below 500, Yeah, but then all, you know, they're not good. No, they're but, not good. But Cleveland was just, they just collapsed down the stretch. Cleveland just, just hmm. became irrelevant down the stretch. It was, they just, it was almost like when, when Ramirez duked it out on the field, with Anderson, it was like almost like you know, right around that time, and then after that, they kind of just became irrelevant. That's weird. Why would that? You figured they could fire him up right or something. There. <laughs> and then they got, and they got like a legit. Um, what's his name? Is it is it B- Bibby the pitcher, the rookie pitcher they have? He's got like thirteen wins. That's or the thing is, I don't, like I couldn't, I couldn't pick a guy out of the lineup. And the same thing with Milwaukee. It seems like the Centrals, like nobody cares, like nobody talks about Milwaukee, like ever. Uh, in the NL, any thoughts on? I mean, all the teams that are in the mix, I would lo- outside of Miami, I would love to to make it. Well, it's interesting. Like you got what, as we speak, almost like a week's worth, you know, seven or eight games left, and Arizona like hasn't done anything other than jump in and out of yeah. a wild card in like the last like month. I thought it's they were going to collapse. Like, I thought their season was now they over. Got, they, now, as yeah. we speak, we got, they got a two game lead over the next last next to last wild card. It could come down next. to their last three games against the Astros, though. That they could. That'd be fun. Could collapse the whole I game. really want Chicago Cubs to make the playoffs. I think that would be fun. I mean, it just it, I think it's the world's good when the Red Sox and Yankees are good, but I think it's also good when the Cubs yeah. are relevant. Um and that and that's basically it. I mean, what else is there to say as Red Sox and Yankees? I mean, who are you guys gonna cheer for? Like if you had a a one A team, who is it? <clears throat> well, I don't want to cheer for the Astros. We all know that. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I'm kind of with you, Brian, and we talked about on the on our morning show, too, that we're kind of on the 
Baltimore Orioles bandwagon a little bit. Yep. Um, I, I mean, they got a young team. I mean, they haven't really been dominant since Kyle Ripken was on the team, really. Or, and they didn't dominate a whole lot. Yeah, back then. so, yeah. I mean, I would love to see them make a run, at least make it to the to the championship series. I think that would be cool to How see. How about you, John? Who's your – I, I, you know, the, the feel good story is, is I, I say is Baltimore, and I love to see them win 100 games. That'd be great. I mean, it'd be great for the game. It'd be great for the game of baseball. But you know, the, the awesome thing about the the whole mix is, I mean, we didn't say anything about Cincinnati. Still, they're only a half game out of the wild. I know, card. and they played like crap lately and too. Played, and San Francisco has not played good. And 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 believe it or not, the freaking Padres are playing really yeah. good baseball, and I think they're only four or five out still. Yeah, as a Friday the fourth. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and no one's talking about them. They're playing some really good baseball, and they got they got, they got they, they're healthy, too. That's the other thing. And a lot of teams I mean, are really banged up right now. Um, I like Baltimore. Um, definitely not Houston. I mean, I, I think... I root for Seattle because I like who I like J Rod. I like the vibe on that team. I like yeah. the fact that they they hopefully could overtake Houston still and win the West and maybe even still put a little distance there, um, just so it's like not like holding your breath to the last day. But I love for baseball it'd be insane. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's a great baseball city too. Like that, they have nothing else. Yeah, and they got so they got jammed, the so Sonics. jacked up last year <laughs> and they got into the playoffs and you know the the vibe the vibe is right there. Um, but, okay, that's you know, good. That's good. When you say I'm pulling for, I, I I think overall people are gonna not root for Atlanta because they just been the flavor all year and they've just been kind of like Atlanta's you know, like vanilla. It's yeah. like America for like it's so true. Like I maybe it's the holdover from the '90s when like they won every year, but then yeah. they lost the World Series every year. And I thought that as good as Glavin, Maddox, and and Smoltz were, they were so boring and so robotic. And this team is not. But I definitely don't like. I don't get all jacked up to watch. I mean, they're great. I mean, the home runs, the run differential, everything is amazing. But I don't know. I just don't really care about them. Tampa bores me, too. Tampa oh, bores me. Oh, get always. It. Every year, Tampa's boring. Nobody wants them. But the problem is with that, it's like, you know, that they're that team that is just crafty enough that could just, you know, give everyone advertisers, networks, fans, the, uh, just make them insane because they could – Push to the World Series. There's a lot of teams I'd like to see in the World Series, and they're not one of them. No, I'd love, I'd love to see the Phillies in the World Series. Yeah. I would, even though they were there last year, I think that they, I love to see the Phillies. Sorry, Matt. I mean, I just Harper the oh, whole man. crew. I, I like know. Bryce Harper. But. How about the balls on Nick Cassianos the other day? Oh, that was beautiful. You've seen him naked? No, but I mean, honestly, <laughs> he catch he any any other uh, the, the right place to drop that ball down the right field line. No, I uh, that stuff. I mean, and I, he is. I mean, and he hasn't made an error all season. Is that outfield. true? Hasn't made an error yeah. all year. The only player that has um, overall. You just made that up. No, no, I haven't made that up. He's one of the to qualify for outfield play or whatever, or just in general. He's the only outfielder in uh, Major League Baseball has made an error. I saw that, and, I, and even the announcers were like, "No, don't catch that!" And he yeah. just spun around, and fired at home. Dark. And, and he said, it, "A voice in his head told him to do it." He said, "Usually it only talks a to voice him when he's hitting." Now, now I'm he nervous. Says it usually only talks to him when he's hitting. That's really. And he said, funny. "That's the first so time he's, it's talked he's to him." He's bat he was... crap crazy, <laughs> but he's like, but he, that's what you need to be to be fearless and to play that way. He's John Senecal. I'm Brian Chapman. Matt Royce joining us here on Fan Base, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports. Listen, let's just wrap it up with this. Matt, you've done a first pitch. We did it at the Double A Hartford Yard Goats last year. I did it a couple times last year. I have you ever done it? No, I've never done okay, it. Okay, we'll get we got to get that done next. Yes. We'll talk to Rest All. We'll get that done next year because we're pretty close with the Double A, the Colorado Double A affiliate in Hartford. And what what I would say is that I played baseball through Babe Ruth. I was a good hitter, and I was a lefty, and I never trusted my arm. Like even that throw in warmups from. I played first from first to third. I crapped my pants. I just had no – I could throw hard, but I had no control. So the first pitch, I did it three times a year ago. I One in the dirt, one I blooped in like a Mary, and the other one was good. And so <laughs> basically I was one for three, and, and generally speaking it was terrible. Even you bounced it. I, I mean, bounced it right in front of the plate, yeah. Right, so now, it was now straight. Is this, is this from the mound or is it from like – No, it's in front of the mound. Like, like just off the dirt. Yeah, they don't most most places don't. I let can't you remember because I was at one when you did it last year. <laughs> most like, places don't let you stand on. It was the funny. Well, we, well that, that's a big thing though because a lot of like a lot of these celebrities in the major league parks, they they get cocky and they want to get up on the mound. That, and that's, that's when things that go awry. That was the funny part. I remember because the 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 handler woman at the Hartford Yard Goats 
the whole morning show was there getting ready to throw out a, a, a pitch, and so were like little kids and everything like that. And then there was like the woman from the TV show The Office was there, and she wasn't there like standing next to us. And they were like, they said it 15 times. Oh, don't yeah, don't go right. up on the mound. Yeah. yeah, don't go up on the mound right in front of. We're like, all right, yeah, no problem. So we all pitch, and here she comes. Lady from the office <laughs> basically does like a somersault on the mound. Right. And it's like, here we go, dancing yeah. up on the mound, kicking up the dirt and everything. And, and we're like, oh, God, right. this is bad. And then she threw it like 50 cent. Yeah. Um, the reason why we. 50 br- feet to the right <laughs> to the left. <laughs> the, the, reason, the reason why we bring it up is now there was, I didn't see Stephen A. Smith. Was it really bad? It was like at least like like 10 feet in front of the plate, I think, right? Yeah, it bounced, yeah. I think it bounced once. But did he, he, he throw, throw the, like he's he never thrown? the rubber. He went up to the yeah. But did he throw like he's never thrown before? Like did he clearly never play baseball? Yeah, I mean, he had some form, but I mean, yeah, I mean, he doesn't, he didn't look great. And he then so great. he, so he, it's wa- like when a basketball player gets up there and tries to throw. Like, yeah, it that's so, exactly how it, it was. It looks so awkward, right? right? But some of them, because they're, because they're athletic, can do it. But other ones, it's like their hands so damn big for one, it's right. like they can't even grip a baseball. So right. they, who knows what they're doing? So it's like those guys, you almost got to let them move up and kind of just hand it. Let's, let's put it this way, okay? A, a guy with no arms throughout the first pitch. <laughs> The night before at Yankee Stadium, and he threw a better first pitch than Stephen A. Smith. Okay, so that puts that in perspective. And then <laughs> we had that mom of a Dodgers player. Yeah, she hasn't seen him in seven years. Yeah, tell the yeah. story, Matt. What is the story? I, she's in Venezuela, mm-hmm. and uh, she hasn't seen her son pitch live ever, like uh, since he joined Major League Baseball. And yeah. and she actually was able to come up, watch him pitch, and then the next night, I believe, she threw out the first pitch to him. Yeah, so it was a beautiful, obviously a beautiful moment because I mean, I cannot imagine not seeing your mom. For yeah, they had seven video. Years. They I put mean, up video of him meeting her at the airport, and it was like you know yeah. the, the hug that they had alone. Oh, it was, it was unbelievable. like unbelievable. Yeah, well, I can't amazing. imagine why is it possible that she, he couldn't fly her up with his salary. I don't get it. Right, have you ever watched any sort of Major League Baseball yeah. in your spring training? <laughs> Everybody's got visa issues. It's yeah. like. It goes on and on and on. Well, it doesn't well, matter who you are. There's, unless you're going to pitch in the major leagues, right, you've you got visa issues. Here. Yeah, well, or you <laughs> could just top the border like half of Venezuela has. But I would say that her pitch was unbelievable. Yeah. I like mean, it had movement practicing. on it, too. It yeah. was a strike, but it looked like it was like a slider. She probably taught him how to pitch. That is just the coolest. Well, it's, you know, like a lot of those like countries, you know, you know, these players that are playing in, in the major leagues, you start to read up on them, and they're not the household names. But then you find out, oh, their their father was a pro player there for like, you know, like fifteen years right. in the leagues around right. town and stuff. And then you go down there, it's like that's passion, like yeah. absolute passion for people. So Bruce Dar Grotterall is the guy's name, former twin, I believe. And yep. and the the embrace they had after the pitch was something else. I mean, it's just come and she's by the way, I'm fifty two, and her son's in the majors. She's probably. Not even forty. I mean, she looked really young. I mean, it's. I mean, it just makes me feel super old. But it was a cool moment, and hopefully she'll stay. Jeez, hope she stays. Any other thoughts before we say goodbye? Uh, I'm looking forward to 2024. <laughs> I know. I know. Last one I was on with John, and I, I was just like, "Yeah, the Yankees still got still got a shot." You know, yeah, but we you said that until it. like no, it's yesterday. A, it's amazing how how fast your perspective switches. Yeah, it's but, it's literally game by game. It was literally game by it game, was. especially with the schedule with them playing Toronto. We're like, oh, we have to do is just sweep lose Toronto. A, lose the first two. Just beat them like, six in a row, and we're there. And it's just ne- never going to happen. So you're saying there's still a chance. Yeah, yeah that's what he would say. Chance. He literally said that yeah. like seven but times. But I am looking forward to 2024. Michael King has been unbelievable, yeah. and they've done it right. Like I've I've said, they, they threw him out there for 40 pitches, then 50 pitches. The other night he pitched 100 pitches. He was a guy who was a reliever last year got hurt, right? Yeah, he had Tommy John surgery yeah. and um and a bouncing back and bounce back. I mean, they, they must tighten that elbow up something serious because the slider is fantastic. Yeah, the other thing I think about him, which would make him more – I mean, he was a great uh, back, back end of the bullpen guy, obviously, for the Yankees. But I think what will make him effective as a starter is – you know, it's almost like Adovino was. It's like you know that slider is coming, so it's like sometimes you can almost wait on it in a short game, short game situation, and and, and do damage against him. And I think we saw that a little bit with him a year ago, before yep. a year ago before his injury. Maybe that had something to do with it. Um, but at the same time, you stretch that out, and you know you can maybe make up for it over the course of seven right. innings. You know, hopefully next year the Yankees score more than two and a half, three runs a game. So <laughs> we'll see. They got a lot of work to do. Matt, thanks for sitting in. Thank you, John. It's good to see you as always. You've been listening to. Fan- Base a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports.